This conference will now be recorded. Hey, hello everyone. So good morning to all. In today's session, we can discuss about the former events. Yesterday, I discussed about the uh, on submit event, and let us discuss about uh, the remaining events. There are a lot of events are there. Let me talk about the same. So let me close all these windows. So that uh, we discussed about on submit. That is an event we seen already yesterday. Now we are going to discuss about some more events, guys. Here they are going to be on focus is the event. On focus is the event. On blur is the event. I will show you all the events together in a single form so that these are all form events, right? So on blur and on change. These are the regularly used events. Let us talk about these events as well. It's okay, right now. Uh, let me open the previous file. I think we created a register.html in the last session, I believe. So the file is uh, register.html. This is the file we created, right? The last session we created the following file on click the button. We are trying to save the data and uh, username, email, and all. And here we are able to collect the data and we are able to print the data also. This is what we seen in the last session. Okay. Now remember carefully two things I want to talk about here. Without entering any data in the form, if we can submit, I don't want to proceed. So actually now what will be happen? Without entering any data, if you are submitting this, it will try to print something in the console. Now you can see it is trying to print something in the console. Some empty values is trying to print in the console. I want to submit the form when data is entered in the text box fields. If without data in the form fields, if you are submitting the form, I don't want to proceed to server. Actually, here we are sending the data to server. Let us write a message like this sending to server. Sending to server. I don't want to send the data to server. I mean, uh, if you are not entering, I don't want to send a request to server. Definitely how to do something. Now you can see sending data to server. No, I don't want to send a data to server. If this is empty, if you enter the data, then the meaning you have to send the data to server. So now we need to validate. To validate the form, I don't want to write any complex logic, very simple logic. If you didn't enter, simply show an alert or, or else you can make this uh, border of the text box as red color. That's all. We don't want to do anything. Okay, right. Try to see. This is very important. When we are interacting with the form fields, what we will do. Generally, you can see I'm going to facebook.com. You know, Facebook create account. Let me show you one minute. Let it be load. <laughs> Facebook create account. I just want to log out. Okay, you can see the create account functionality once again, please. Now you can see I'm going to click on the create account. Now can we see this is the form we are able to see. I'm submitting without entering any values. Now you can see some errors are coming. Now I entered something called test here. Okay, when we are leaving the text box, can you see this? What is our name? Tooltip is coming, right? That is there. I entered the name when you I am moving to surname you can see surname box is having red color border when you are clicking into the surname now you can see my mouse is focusing into it now you can see now the tooltip gone as well as the surname red color is also gone because I focus on the mouse inside of it now I'm clicking outside now you can see red color is coming again when you're focusing that is coming when you're going outside it is red color coming again. Can you see how the errors, the red color messages are toggling here? Yeah, this is what exactly we need to implement, guys. Let us see. May not such a kind of functionality we are going to implement. Let me show you very basic functionality. I don't want to write any complex logics because we don't know loops and conditional statements. Let me write very, very basic thing by using if statement. So I just want to, I think everybody know if statement, right? I think if, and this is the condition, and here we will pass some condition, C O N D I O N condition. If this condition is evaluated to true, then this block of code will be executed. Everybody knows, right? If you want, you can take else block also. 
what when else block will be executed if the condition evaluated to false else block will be executed if the condition is evaluated to true then this block will be executed everybody know because i don't want to use else block just i want to use if statement only uh, let me go with if statement by using this if statement i want to verify each and every text box value is empty or not if it is empty do something if it is not empty do something guys remember here this is the previous session code let me copy the code let me create one more file with a name called register2.html a new file i am creating just here try to see <laughs> guys on submit the form the same story even not prevent a default i don't want to do anything because i don't want to refresh the page i don't want to reload the page this will stop the page refreshing okay great without entering any data if you are submitting this we have to validate the form and we have to design the form with red color i mean the form field should be turned to red color border i mean if you are not entering anything in the form on submit this border of this username input field should turn into red color so i want to make something like this so then in this point of time what we can do right you can see now exactly what we are going to do here first of all i am going to get the where u name equal to on submit the button i am getting the information document dot get element by id ah so up to here you are getting guys you are not getting dot value also if you get a dot value you will get the value you entered okay you you can see that is the program we written yesterday can you see this is the way we written to get the value of a input field we are using dot value property here to get the value you entered in the text box now can we see here i'm not using dot value now you can see console dot log of u name i'm just printing the u name i want to show you what is this id u name so how i told you right every element in javascript will be called as an object now so this get element by id will get the element of this u name the reference everything the element will be available into the following variable u name i am printing the variable name u name you can take any variable guys not only u name right don't get confused i am taking this as a my name right don't get confused variables could be any name right you don't need to take the same name here right so now you can see i'm submitting can you see if we oh not this is the file we have to execute this file right register to let us execute this file can you see i'm pressing f12 again here you can see in the console i'm submitting the button now you can see you are getting the input element something you are getting you are getting that element so if you want to get the type of the element u name dot type so what type of that is u name dot uh, id what type of id that is if you want to access the properties of them type is text and id is u name like this we can access them guys here right so but if you can write a class it may not works for you because class is a predefined keyword we cannot write class attribute like this i believe i think we may get an error i believe yeah you are getting something called undefined so actually there is an attribute called class because in javascript in html class is class is used for denoting the uh, class is used for designing the element but in javascript a class represents uh, a generally you know what is a class in programming languages right in javascript class is different in html class is different in html we will use class for designing an element but in javascript a class is a predefined keyword so we cannot write like this but how can we access the key of the value of the class there is another way we can talk about in the dom session right now you no need to worry about it i am writing the value now you can see i am submitting this now you can check this i am getting i am not getting the value empty now you can enter something i am entering something called test now if we can submit this second time you can see the value you entered is also coming so you can see by doing this we can get all the information of the particular element in if you want you can design this also guys here my name dot style we know right style dot background color uh, background color equal to i'm just going to take it as a red color now you can see i'm going to take the red color equal to red i'm just going to take it as a red now you can check this on submit the background color will be turned to red now so i mean this is the if you can take dot value you will just get the value of the element only you cannot get anything so because of doing this this my name variable contain the complete information of the element
so this is exactly the dom so if you if you want to access any property now you can write the property my name dot inner html you want to set any value now you can see my name dot value equal to rom i'm setting the value i'm not getting i'm setting the value now you can take this on submit the button rom is going to be placed into the text box automatically can you see how can we add a value to the input element how can we get the value for example this is the setting value now if you want to get the value don't need to assign simply you can write this console.log and you will get the value you entered into the form now you can go and submit this i entered hello world on submit this you are getting hello world the value you enter this value we have to send to server no i want to set some value to the input form field yeah you can set the value to the input form field also this is also valid guys right so i think you got some clarity so actually id type id class placeholder and min length max length all are the attributes of input element we know very well all are the attributes of input element those attributes will become as a properties here in the my, my name is object value type id class placeholder everything will become a properties of the my name object my name refers input element only in javascript in html this is an element in javascript that is an object <laughs> what object will have always object will have properties properties and uh, methods right yeah that's what exactly now you can check this i won't write one small condition if the text box is empty uh, how can you write this simply you can see my name dot value is equal to equal to empty remember if the text box value you enter okay no problem if you didn't enter the text box value it is empty equal to equal to empty then it is going to be empty now so then what i want to do i just want to write a small alert message here by saying that uh username required simply i'm writing username r e q u i r e d username required now you can check this i'm submitting this alert now you're getting username required I entered some value. Now you can submit this. Will you get the alert there? No, I'm not getting the alert on submit the button. Why? Because this condition will becomes false. Why? Because you entered the value. Value is not empty. Equal to equal to empty now. No. So that this block is not executed. So your form is valid. If you have anything missed, condition will be true. If the value is empty, then it has to show the alert to the user guys. Right. In the same manner, you can. This is actually displaying alerts is the old approach. No, sir, I don't want to alert. I want to display a small message there. Let me show you how can we display. No need to display the message. You can see my name dot style dot border border. You can see border equal to. I am going to take this one pixel solid hash red color. You can take simply color red. That's all. Now you can check this. What is going to be happen? On click this. Can you see the border color is red? Because the value you didn't enter anything in the text box, na. That's why the border color is red. Okay, great. So let me make this as a two pixels. Okay. Now you can check this. On submit the button. Now you can see border color is turned to red. So that you can understand. Oh ho, this field may be required. Simply very simple thing. Okay. Now you can see my mouse is. Uh, I am going to focus into this input element. When I am focusing, can you see my mouse is blinking into the text box right now? When you are focusing the mouse, I want to remove the red color border. Without entering any value in the input form field, if you are coming out, I want to make the red color again. I want to display the red color again because you are entered into the text box to enter the value. Okay. Then I want to remove the red color border. Okay, after entering the value, you are coming out. So then I want to. I don't want to show the red color because you entered already value. If you didn't enter the value when you are leaving from the text box, I have to display the error message again. The same story what we did in the Facebook guys. For example, you can see I am going to focus the mouse here. Now you can see first name. When I am focusing the first name, error is coming there. Understand? So when your surname surname border is gone. Where is your mouse is focusing right now? Where is your mouse is blinking right now? The text box red color is gone. Right, the same story we want to implement here also. When I am focusing the mouse, it has to be gone. So, on the input form field, try to see this is the event you need to fire there. Now, on focus is the event, guys. This is the focus event. When we are focusing the element into that particular text box, I want to fire a function hide error. 
you can take any function i i just want to hide that uh, red color border that's why i am writing the function name like this hide error of this what is the meaning of this you know this means current element uh, i don't want to write get element by id so because of variable this this refers the current element now you can see i am going to define the function hide error now you can see i am not doing anything you can focus the mouse inside of it now you can see there is error when i am focusing the mouse can you see my cursor is blinking into the username input form field and it is giving an error hide error function is not defined <laughs> when this is coming when we are interacting on the input form field nothing but you are just focusing your mouse onto the username field and you are getting the error like this now let us go there i am going to the bottom here you have to define the one more function not into the save data function you have to create a separate function what is the function we have f u n c t o n function hide error is a function with the current element so that is a this is a parameter right so you have to pass a parameter now you can check this you may not have any error on focus this are you getting any error no error because function is defined okay let me do one thing inside this i am writing console dot log of element i want to see what is this is having exactly element this means current element now earlier you printed my name based on the id you got the current element right now you can check this guys i am going to write console dot log now you can check this console dot log my name <clears throat> i am printing the variable my name m y n a m e my name just refresh the page on submit the button can you see you are getting this now what are you getting you are getting the current element okay very good when we are focusing the mouse inside of it also now you can see the current element is printing i mean what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of this we already seen the same story in the early sessions i believe right we can get an element by its id by its uh, current element this dot uh, what is the meaning of this current element so where we are interacting when i am interacting the current element i want to get the current element information then you can pass this keyword here you will get the current element only so now here what i want to do on focus on focus if there is a value in the text box okay if there is no value in the text box i want to do something now you can see element dot style dot border again the same property how to take it border equal to i'm taking one pixel solid hash triple three is the actual color of the border i'm changing the color to actual state now you can check this i'm submitting this <clears throat> error is there when you are focusing the mouse can you see the error gone what it is doing guys what i am doing here i am i am giving the actual right now when page loads what is the border color hash triple three you can see when i am designing what is the color code i given yeah this is the border color code triple three i given the same color i am providing to it if it is empty so it is going to be give you the same red color it will be added if it is not empty so this is going to be added there guys exactly right so now you can check this i am submitting the form there is an error when i are focusing there is an error now you are into the <clears throat> now you can see my mouse is blinking into the username input form field i am not entering any value i am just coming to email input field now this is not this is there is no value into the username and it, it should turn to red color again so in this point of time remember carefully when we are entering into the text box we are hiding the error when we are leaving the text box remember carefully guys focus is going to be called when we are entered into the text box to enter some value then focus event will be fired focus event will be fired that is called focusing state now can you tell me uh, username is focusing right now now you can see the username input form is focusing you are able to see the cursor is blinking into the username and remaining two fields email and password are not in focusing state so where is your mouse cursor is blinking that is that state is called focusing state remaining username remaining email and password fields are called they are in blur state remember carefully guys these states are blur and you username state is focus now on focus will be fired when we are entered into the text box on blur is an event this is going to be called when we are leaving from the text box now you can see i am writing show check error or else show error or check error whatever it may be you can take a function like this c h e c k check error i am taking the function like this with the current parameter called this now you can check this guys i am refreshing the page 
now you focus into it nothing happen when we are leaving now i'm now my cursor is blinking into the username input field now i'm jumping to email input field now you can see the error is coming so on focus the function will be called when we are leaving from the text box this event will be fired when you are leaving check error is calling so what i need to do in this i have to verify if the text box is entered with the value or not right now you can check this so now i am just going to do something here function hide error sorry check error one more function check error with this parameter element is the element as a parameter now we have to hide the error if value entered if a value not entered we have to display the error there guys exactly right let us show you this how exactly we will do so here what i want to do uh, first of all we have to verify the value if element dot value is not equal to empty i mean if you entered the value so i don't want to display the things not equal to empty so uh, that is not equal to empty then hide the red color message okay now this message if it is empty i want to take else block also here the situation like this if it is empty you didn't enter you are leaving simply then it should be red color hash red and this is going to be two pixel solid now you can check this the same behavior now i am submitting a red color you focused you are not entering anything you are leaving you are focusing again you are leaving you are focusing again you are leaving leaving is nothing but blur state i focused i blurred i focused i blurred nothing but entering is nothing but on focus leaving is nothing but on blur i mean when we are entered into the input form field that is focusing state when we are leaving from the input form field that is called blur state exactly these are the form fields these are all nothing but interactions on a form we are interacting with the input form field we are entering we are leaving we are entering and we are leaving something like this guys exactly so this is what exactly the way of doing so this is the validating an input form field like exactly a facebook kind of stuff so like this you can validate the remaining fields also now copy paste the same now i'm going to take one more thing let us take this as a email email just id change only guys nothing to do this is going to be email that's all we don't want to change anything so here email dot value equal to equal to empty email dot style dot border is red color that's all now you can check this you can enter some value here now on submit the button i am not entering anything now you can see email is turned to red color this is not getting red color why because you already entered the value right so now the same when i am focusing the mouse into the e email it has to hide when you are leaving it has to come it has to check and come right now what we need to do nothing to worry same on focus on blur events also we are going to pass on the username email input form field same function nothing to change why because in every hide error function we are passing the current element as the parameter so we don't have any problem function name is the same we don't want to write uh, 10 functions for 10 fields so one function for all the fields on focus for all the fields on one function on focus for all the fields on blur one function i'm not writing do you see the same will be works now you can check this let me enter uh, this uh, now you can check this i'm entering this now you are getting now i'm entered error, error gone you can leave now you can enter you can leave and you can enter you can leave and you can enter so this is exactly the events call focus and blur so not only this there are a lot of situations are there right now i tell you one situation try to remember the situation these are all form events only especially when we are interacting with the text box fields this is going to be come into the picture okay now right guys so now you can see uh, one more thing uh on select on select also i am writing don't worry this is not a mostly used event don't need to worry about it on select uh get info i am writing one more function called get info of this okay na? this now you can see this is somewhat different okay but we don't want to use anyway but i just want to tell you the purpose of this function uh, but ra very rarely i didn't use anywhere as of now seriously says guys this uh, on select event this is also current element now you can see now you can check this uh i am not doing anything console.log console.log element dot value i'm just printing the value into the console now you can check this now refresh the page 
in the console you have to get a message i submitted are you getting any message in the console no i am not getting any message in the console now you entered something called welcome okay now are you getting any message there do you see on select function is firing anywhere no it is not firing at all now i entered some email id also but is anywhere the function is fired the function is not at all fired do you observe do you observe guys the function is uh, not at all fired as of now so when that will be fired on select can you see i am selecting control a now you can see on select the text uh, then only the event will be fired can you do you observe guys here i am selecting this control now simply i am selecting this if we can select on select in the sense the event will be fired now it is not selected now i am selecting all the thing now leave it the function is going to be called what is the value you selected you want to get it yeah there is a value i entered there and we will get the value on select the value something like this okay right don't worry this is not a big deal of this event right so this is simply how to remember it okay now right okay guys next one more is uh almost all events we seen but we didn't see on change event guys on change event is very beautiful uh for the most of the fields like check boxes radio buttons and the select boxes we can use this on change event regularly uh, these events also on focus on blur also we can use all every event we can use guys here whatever the events we are using on focus on blur uh on change on every element also we can access them no problem let me show you a small scenario guys here i am creating one more file with a name called register3.html register3.html is the file i created let me remove all this stuff from here okay i'm not doing anything so just this is the only thing okay right this is the regular form you know uh, i don't want this username and email let me remove all this stuff i'm going to take some different form guys this time not the same form every time so i just want to take into a different scenario now you can take class name equal to class equal to form control that's all form c o n t r o l form control run the file and this is going to show you only one input form field with a button that's all right yeah one input form field with a button okay username here i want to take a radio button now you can check this uh how we can do on change events i just want to show you guys here now uh i want to take a do class form group class okay class equal to form group okay form group so here we can take this a label l a b a label l a b a label for gender let me take it as a gender d e n d e r gender <clears throat> this handling is little bit different guys actually input type equal to radio <clears throat> or else let me take this into everything into a label l a b a label open label close label for male label for female okay i'm just going to take them as a something now can we see uh, you are getting but in front of male in front of female we have to display the radio buttons right okay let me display the radio buttons as well so here i just want to take input type equal to radio try to see this is input type equal to radio r a d i o radio so here also radio now you can check this two radio buttons will be displayed onto the right thing now you can check this male and female on click this selected on click this selected oh guys can you see can we select two options is it valid no will you submit the form like this no right we have to deselect any one of it now you can see both are selected no 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 i don't want to proceed the form like this we have to proceed with only one value will you select gender and uh, male and female both values and you can submit it no so in this point of time why they are selecting both are selecting right remember here very very important attribute i'm telling you the name is an attribute name is an attribute actually we will talk about this name attribute later this is for server side purpose actually name is for id is for javascript purpose in javascript we are getting the value based on id now but if it is a radio button we have to access the value based on the id based on the name also but name is the best choice
Now you can see I'm taking name is the same empty and empty. Now you can check this. I selected, I selected. Now both are selecting. No, still we are not. Now remember, I'm collecting a name as gender and a name also gender. You have to take the same name for the both input form fields, especially in the radio buttons. If you have 10 radio buttons, in the 10 radio buttons, you have to select only one radio button. If you have that kind of scenario, for all the 10 radio buttons, you have to take the same name. Now you can check this. What is going to be happen? It is selected. When I select female, it has to be deselected. Now you can see that is what exactly the thing. Remember, form handling is little bit confuses you maybe. Right? Keep it in mind. Some of the form fields will behaves like this. Earlier, what happened? Both the fields are selected. No, I don't want to allow both the fields to be selected. I want to select only one field. If you can select first field, second field should be deselected. If you select a second field, first field should be deselected. Something like this, guys. Right. Now you can check this. I'm going to select, I'm going to deselect, I'm going to select, I'm going to deselect. Okay, I'm refreshing the page. Is there any value is selected? No, nothing is selected. There is an attribute called checked. C H E C K E D. Checked is the predefined attribute. Now you can see actually nothing is selected. When you're refreshing the page, can you see mail is checked automatically? No, I don't want to make it uh, checked here i want to make checked for the female now you can check this refresh the page female is checked automatically sometimes when page loads we have to check one option automatically ah then in this point of time if it is a radio button we can use a checked attribute checked is an attribute by using this attribute we can by default select the value checked by default radio button will be checked i don't want to check anything on load the page now you can check this nothing will be checked by default if you want to check something by default, you can add the checked attribute to the element. So automatically the input form field will be checked. Now you can see. Uh, this is a little bit different guys here. I'm not taking any ID. Okay, first of all, you cannot take ID. Why? Because ID, if you can take, you have to take two things. ID equal to male, ID equal to female. ID should not be same. Name may have same, but ID, what is the purpose of ID? ID is always in your unique purpose. Don't give the same ID for multiple elements. Even though if you can give multiple elements same ID, it cannot get all the elements. It, get, it can get only one element only. Now you can see I'm giving you ID gender. Okay, you can take ID gender here also. I'm taking ID equal to gender and gender and gender. Now on submit the page, you want to get the ID now. Okay, document dot get element by ID. Element by ID. What is the ID you have there? Gender. Actually, gender ID is for two elements are having the same ID. But which element you are going to get it? Now I want to know. So will you get the both elements? Console.log. I'm going to print E L E. Now can you check this? On submit the page, will you get both elements? No, ID will always use it for finding one element only. Now you can submit this. Are you getting both elements? No, you are getting only one. What is this one? Male or female? If you want to do this, you can set the value also. Let me take male and let me take female. Remember, as of now, you didn't provide value attribute for any of the input form field. I'm providing value for only this form field only. Can you tell me what is the reason? Remember, in the username text box, you will enter the value. Actually, you will enter the value. But in this, you are not entering the value. You are selecting the value. The selected value should go to the database. So it's mandatory for radio buttons, for check boxes, for uh, select boxes. You need to provide value attribute. For input form field, text boxes, text area, we don't want to provide a value attribute. For others, you need to provide value attribute, especially radio buttons, check boxes, and select boxes. It's mandatory. But you can see, I'm able to get only one element, that too, male only. I'm not getting other element. Can you see? Right? This is a problem here, actually. No, if you want to take ID is different. Okay, now you can take this gender one and gender two. Now I'm taking this. Now you have to change ID also, na? Gender one. This is uh, male, right? Let us take this as a male. M A L E male. Okay, and you have to take female also, na? Let me take the variable as female. Like this, we can get it, guys. No problem, right? This is also valid. Now you can check this male, we can get it as well as female also, we can get it. Now you can check this, both the radio buttons. See, you have to take different ID guys. Now you can check this, both. Uh, this is male radio button, this is female. In this, which one is checked? I'm submitting the button, but is there anything is checked? If without checking anyone, if you're submitting the page, I don't want to allow you. You should check anyone. 
then in this point of time mail dot checked is an attribute the attribute guys this is a refers an object now i mean this is going to refers the input element mail this is refers the input element female so checked is an attribute dot checked c h e c k e d checked it will return true or false both will be false now can you see both are false why both are false you did not check any one if you can check it now i am checking female now you can submit this now you can see one is true one is false if both are false nothing is selected now what i want to do here i won't write a small condition guys here try to see if i'm writing mail dot checked c h e c k e d checked o r r and uh, both are false if any one is true okay i'm taking r operator f e m a l e female dot checked if any one is checked right if any one is checked r operator guys what is the meaning of r operator if this is false and this is also false if both are false what is the meaning of it you did not select anything na right or else you can take end operator also no problem whatever you want you can take it so false and false false then the block of code is not executed now i am taking something like this or if any one is checked okay if any one is not checked i don't want to allow you to do something right false or false it will becomes false only so now i want to take a not operator in between them don't worry let me try like this let me write alert select gender i am just writing a message s c l e c t select g e n d a gender let me check this what is going to be happen here i am submitting this you are getting the message if you can select the gender and if you can submit this you are, oh i am getting the gender message again why so am i need to take end operator here let me check this i am submitting i am not getting anything why so oh i think uh, i need to write the condition guys one minute i will write the comparison operator like this equal to equal to true or or equal to equal to true if any one is true i am writing the condition like this hmm? if any one is true then we have to proceed for it otherwise we don't want to if if any one is true means um <clears throat> if any one is not true let me submit this alert is coming okay now if you can submit this you cannot get the alert because any one is selected na so you selected female now submit this you cannot get the message there something like this but here checked is the attribute for radio buttons for the check boxes if you are checking the value then i want to fire an event right exactly guys right so this is what exactly you need to check it right on change the value of the radio button also remember here i didn't write anything just i written the submit value only now you can see on change is an event on change event we can write on the input when you are changing the value i want to execute something right uh, find gender i am writing find g e n d r find gender of this current element i am passing you can take any function there no problem i am writing the same for this also because both are going to denote gender only find gender now you can see when we are checking this check box now you can see the function is firing when i am changing the value the function is firing it is not on click it is not something i said on change the value of the radio button the function is firing to you right what is the function find gender is not defined so on change the value this function is going to be executed i want to execute some logic now you can go with the function now it is going to be element so what is the gender you selected you want to get this now you can see console dot log of element dot value element dot value you will get the value of the current you selected now you can see i selected male i selected female i selected male again i said this is on change event exactly how we can change here see uh, radio button check boxes select boxes are having on change event on change the event is going to be get fired guys okay this is what exactly the concept of uh, on change uh, you can go for the radio button also now you can check this i am taking one more radio button let me take this a small radio button with some fields here take it as a div class equal to form group let me take this as a state i am taking label and label same for the select box also same guys select state i am writing this as something called select state 
let me take select element select tag open select tag close <clears throat> here every select tag should contain option option value equal to it should also having value attribute guys because in the select box also you are not entering anything you are selecting the value the selected value should go to the db that's the reason you have to add value attribute for this also let me take some values here ap i'm taking something called ts i'm taking something called ts i'm taking some state values here mh mh i'm taking something called dl and DL something like I take it now you can refresh the page this is the values you are able to see on change also the same on change event you have to fire on to the element on change C H E A N G on change equal to get state I'm writing this exactly you can write this also what is the meaning of this current element current element dot value means the value you selected now you can check this so it is going to be works like you the same function this is going to be the current element now you can alert this whatever the value you selected that value will be printed here alert on change event is, event is going to be fired or not you can check the ele dot value now you can check this now i'm selecting the value in the drop down can you see the value you selected is going to be printed on the screen now i'm going to select on dl now you can see on change the event is firing on change the event is firing these are the uh, events guys all the events related to form and mostly used events are on change on uh, on change on submit on focus on blur these four are the mostly used events right there are, there may be a lot of events are there no need to worry about all the events but we need to know basic stuff of the event here right okay the next target is here we have to discuss about conditional and looping statements guys conditional and uh, looping statements i think i hope you already know about these things i believe what do you say do you have any idea but whether you have an idea or i don't know but i need to discuss with them because i strongly believe as a developer seriously if we want to become a very good developer guys seriously if you want to become a very good developer it's mandatory to understand conditional and looping statements i don't know how good we are generally some people will say sir i am very good in writing logics okay why you are not or some people will say are you are saying about your friend sir my friend is there he is very good in writing logics why you are not the only thing guys here you should know conditional statement and looping statements very well if i ask you everybody will tell us sir i am very good in conditional statements sir i am very good in looping statements but remember the conditional and looping statements when to use how to use that is very important <clears throat> when some people have confusion uh, when to use for loops or when to use conditions sir i don't know sir uh, i'm not good in writing logics don't worry i may not tell you all the logics in one shot but slowly and step by step step by step we will make you to write the complex logics i don't want to write initially complex logics i will just tell you what is a condition when to apply a condition what is the purpose of writing a condition what is the purpose of writing a loop so then after that we will slowly move into the coding then when i'm writing the logics you will automatically understand oh oh this is the reason we have we need to use this condition statement i will see one more thing i want to tell you guys seriously if you want to become very good developer you should be very good in conditional and looping statements keep it in mind seriously it it, it look like very basic actually it look, it look like very basic uh, and one more point i want to tell you logics logic means it is a 100 lines of code are 20 lines of code are 30 lines of code no sometimes logic may be one line only or two lines only don't think logic means 100 lines 200 lines of code logic is not at all that many number of lines of code sometimes the logic may be very simple sometimes logic may be very big also but don't worry slowly we need to habituate of writing logics seriously guys if you want to deep dive into the javascript very well first of all this is the area i know you already learned these conditional and looping statements in your graduations i know very well right but what you know i don't know but i want to tell you what exactly a condition is what exactly a loop is but don't miss this session guys okay right conditional and looping statements next session we can discuss